You've been spending a lot of time in the shitter, haven't you? <laughs> Plastered all the walls. Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes, a podcast with Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and myself, Howard, from Behind the Mistakes, a YouTube channel with a lower subscriber account every day. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you doing? Fine. <laughs> Better than Actually, Howard, good. it sounds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You num- your numbers haven't gone down that far, have they? Well, I, uh, well, they've been kind of steady, plus minus, around uh, 3,009, and then I posted the Halloween video, and just people instantly left. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I thought that was a cracking video. Yeah. Yeah, me too, but yeah. obviously I stepped on someone's feet. Ow. But then again, the, the people commenting, it's been brilliant. So, I mean, you're just siphoning out the... The bad apples. Uh, so. <laughs> you didn't have anything that made an awful sound, right? With that. Mm, well, I did speak during the intro. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, that doesn't count. It might be that, but <laughs> your sweet laugh and uh, and uh, very energetic laughter in the end, just being so happy with your own project. I mean, that's one of the main things to come to your channel. I think. Yeah, I did uh, include my uh, trademark uh, giggle, yeah. uh, but I did actually lose my voice after our last, uh, well, WhatsApp session, and um, during the recording of the like the the outro of the video, I almost didn't have a voice, so I sound completely different than I usually do. But it uh, turned out okay. Do you think people thought you were an imposter and just left? It's not the real Havard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think losing subscribers can be, um, you know, when you post lots of shorts, I know we spoke about shorts the other week, but that can be a little bit of a symptom of doing shorts, can't it? I wouldn't and know. If I, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can do it. If I have a, you know, a semi-successful short, I can gain gain a few subscribers, and then by the time they've actually looked at your full form videos, then they've gone again. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I don't actually like what he does. <laughs> yeah, it is. Usually I don't think about it, but it is. I have been creeping up around that border where I have 100 subscribers next to 4,000. And then it's, of course, that's a milestone I'm working towards. But it's been stagnant. And then when you start losing people, it's like you really feel losing one or two. And <laughs> to be honest, it it hasn't been that much i think i've lost six and now i gained one again so do you think it's because i shared your video on my instagram do you think i put them off you bastard (laughs) 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 i'm really sorry mate i don't think (laughs) (laughs) i was only trying to help actually that yeah people people should understand that they can actually subscribe to more people you don't have to unsubscribe from one to subscribe to a new one (laughs) we don't mind (laughs) actually that that story had uh 59 views and from the time i saw your video that morning when i posted that story to the evening when it got 59 views your video went up exactly 59 views (laughs) (laughs) yeah so you're welcome (laughs) <laughs> well thank you <laughs> but n- now i just realized i'm doing my next video is gonna be a washing machine video because uh, we actually crashed uh, <laughs> like uh, mr mellow's uh, live stream yesterday and he has actually been having quite a uh, rise in subscribers after he posted his last video on how to make a smart washing machine so now i'm working on how can I make a washing machine even smarter? <laughs> I thought for Ro- rocket, rocket, rocket powered or anything. I mean, <laughs> I thought for one minute then you were going to say that his subscriber count went up since we crashed his live stream. I did. I take take full credit for that. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh... I mean, my my dishwasher video is one of my best performing. So yeah, uh, household appliances are apparently really good. Is the dishwasher one yeah. where you've just filled it full of soap? Yeah, I just tried it with yep. hand wash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it was it was quite fun. And I mean, it, one of the if, in my mind classic uh, Colin first videos is where he throws stuff into a washing machine that was uh, running with the um, with the lid open. Yeah, on that's full awesome. spin. Yeah, that's that's a really good <laughs> tech experiment. I think that's a classic uh, video of the early days of, well, not even YouTube, I guess, but even prehistoric times. <laughs> the the video where the guy <laughs> chucks the the brick inside a a washing machine. I think that was even before uh, Colin Firth. Yeah, probably. Firth, Firth, well, you you Firth said did it. prehistoric times. So is he throwing a rock inside a dinosaur and shaking it? About? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, that would get, get we, a lot of views. We don't as well. have a smart. <laughs> really, <would>. yeah. <laughs> we, we don't have a smart washer, but uh, yeah, it feels prehistoric. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I got a vivid image of someone just <laughs> taking a brick and then throwing it at the wash rack where the wife is in down the stream washing the clothes <laughs> manually. <laughs> that is not something you should do. No. <laughs> <laughs> Go and brick the washing machine. <laughs> Took a dark turn early tonight, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> New record, I think. <laughs> so, should we? Uh, well, should we carry on talking about the video or Mellow Fire, Mellow Labs? Should we talk about what we did last night a little bit more? Well, is there much more to say? No. <laughs> I mean, we didn't do that much. <laughs> we had this problem with you last week, KJ. <laughs> you went to a lovely make a meet up in Norway, met some great people. You spent two minutes talking about that, and then the rest of the night talking about graveyards. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the listeners thought it was fine. <laughs> it was good. So no, I thought um, you know we 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 planned bombing um, Mellow Fire Mellow Labs um, video for about a week before we did it, didn't we? We were just waiting for for him to put another live stream out. I think it was my idea. I need to confess that that it would be fun if we all just bombed his uh, live feed just to see how he reacts. But parallel to that, we were also discussing for our 10th episode if we should have a guest on or not and then it would be only fitting we thought if we then invite our intern as the first guest that would be like a a token of uh, honor or something like that so we decided we should ask him during his live feed to see if we could throw him (laughs) off his game and it did (laughs) Uh, just a little i was uh, i was impressed on his uh, yeah i was impressed yeah Yeah. but when we all joined his he, he noticed that you two had joined, and then I just came in a, a minute or two later. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, I wonder if we're going to get the full full podcast crew in." And then I turned up, and he lost it a little bit then. <laughs> but his face was an absolute picture. And when I um, when I asked him if he wanted to come on the podcast, he he lost it again a little bit there. But again, his face was just pure delight. It was actually really nice to watch. Imagine his surprise when we don't have him on for the tenth episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just joking. Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, couldn't help yeah, myself. Yeah. <laughs> the question is, he was talking about which day was best to do live streams, and they ended up on Mondays. But if he ended up on Tuesday, then he could live stream while being on the podcast. That would be like a meta move to pull. <laughs> it really would. <laughs> it made me laugh when he said he's, he's normally in bed for eight o'clock. <laughs> so you're going to have to do better on that when you come on the podcast. He did say chug a Red Bull or something, didn't he? Yeah, that's. I guess that's the same feeling I had when we uh, attended Maker's Waffle because that was way past my bedtime. Yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> really felt I was reaching for anything <laughs> to keep me awake except putting the the matchsticks under my eyelids. Maybe we should uh, have a word with Andy and see if he wants to have uh, Mellow Labs on his podcast too. <laughs> see how he manages till midnight. So talking of podcasts, we, um, 
we got the new mini episode out today, which is just a just the dregs of what we don't put out in the main episode, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just to make <laughs> make sure that uh, everything recorded uh, gets used, nothing yeah. goes to waste. Yeah, and how better way to do that than to add more workload to ourselves? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's the typical <laughs> content creator problem, I think. Now the issue, and that's also why I was late to this um, recording, was that I don't get to access the the website builder I'm using to keep the the web page updated. And it turns out, for some reason, my IP address is blocked for that specific page. So I was on with their tech support trying to figure it out, but didn't get that far so our latest episode is still not updated and i just realized that now trying to also add the the half pints which is going to be a a smaller icon by the side of the bigger one (laughs) so we have the so we have the full pints and the half pints i even made the reels run half the length that they normally do as well (laughs) (laughs) how many pints that's that's the how many pints are there in a keg (laughs) <laughs> I mean, that should be our celebration episode. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I have the stamina for that. <laughs> <laughs> Both in pint-wise, but also uh, <laughs> podcast-wise. So um, I'd noticed that the website had not been updated. I just thought you were being a lazy bastard. <laughs> no, it's... Uh... Well, I am, but uh, <laughs> not only. Th- this was actually sa- <laughs> like saved by the bell or saved by technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I haven't checked actually, but I can access, well, I can't access it now, obviously, but uh, we get data on traffic on the web page, and I haven't actually checked that before. So, oh no, Maybe. don't tell Glenn that what, there is what, more what? numbers he can look at. <laughs> oh, there? Yeah. Maybe I can set up an automated routine so it just sends sends him a report once a day or twice a day. Morning stats, evening stats. That's still not often enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, I love looking at stats. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I literally ask you twice a week for the podcast stats, KJ. That's t- yeah, and that's really kind of you to keep it at that low level. I, check, I, I, I check can feel back. you sitting, jumping, yeah. and wanting to know. Yeah. And one of these days, I'm going to give you the in-logs. You can see it for yourself. I do, I do like statistics, but uh, you need, uh, what's it called? Um, significant data. <laughs> Pull some uh, re- decent results out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well actually I know I know there's at least one of the maker um podcast out there that's not getting quite as many downloads as us, so that spurs me on. <laughs> <laughs> Let let's let's not add that to our mention list. <laughs> no, we don't no, in no, the no. rivalry. No no no, I kept that quiet. <laughs> uh, so let's go back to what we've done the the last week, I think. Uh Hovar, you, you should start since you actually published a video. Yeah, uh, I have really been working hard on completing my uh, Halloween build. And I actually published it yesterday, or the day before. Well, the dice, they, they fly. Sunday. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the build has been. Um, a remake of the classic uh, Christine uh, horror movie with uh, all the well bells and whistles. So it came out really good. Uh, I really loved it. Um, the only downside is I used paint uh, that is water-based and it was snowing outside today when I was uh, <laughs> walking the Halloween round. So when I was brushing the snow off, I got red paint on my fingers. And, <laughs> oh, no, I forgot to treat it. So it's actually water repellent. Oh, no. But that so means that uh, it must have looked pretty cool. That's it. 
Oh, yes. <laughs> it looks like the, the the blood is dripping off it. <laughs> that was one question I, I had written down, burn. actually, to ask you. The, the paint you used looked like ink. It was so, so runny, but it yeah, was really full of pigment. It's... It was definitely looked like an ink to me. Yeah, so it's... Uh... It's not a paint, basically. It's uh, it is a water-based uh, pigment, which is really bright and it's yeah. really easy to put on, and it soaks into the wood. So unless you're, if you're trying to mask off and do different colors and so on, it's a bit more difficult. But I really like it. But you need to treat it for it to not uh, wash off again if it gets in contact with water. But usually, I just put things up on my display wall in my workshop so that's usually not an issue but uh, being out in the snow today i realized i should have done that <laughs> did you did you power the the car using a capacitor no it was actually the uh, i used a, a bosch battery uh, of course okay. you did and, uh, <laughs> and uh, i actually i made sure to charge all my batteries and i just filled my pockets with batteries today but of course it's it's lead lights so i didn't even put a dent in the first battery so i carried a a vast array of batteries with me for no apparent reason. <laughs> Did you have a trailer as well to the car to carry all the candy? <laughs> no, uh, I did actually plan early on if I should have a cup holder on it, but I was thinking that that would throw off the balance because I'm using mm. suspenders, which we agreed on is the actual little term. <laughs> we um, did not. <laughs> <laughs> two against one. <laughs> yeah, two against one. Braces for all the normal um, listeners. <laughs> but the problem is it it's so good, and of course the kids love it, so I'm going to keep it around. But the problem is where am I going to keep it? <laughs> now, I, I found a spot in my workshop. I can keep it suspended from my roof, and then I can, instead of using batteries, I can put, put a 12-volt power supply, and then I can use it as a decorative uh, like roof lamp. Oh, cool. But... <laughs> At some point, I'm going to just be bumping my head into it and until I get so angry, I just smash it to pieces. So I need to find a more permanent solution. But yeah, I kind of realized that some of my larger projects are really cramping up my storage space. It was looking a bit cramped in your workshop. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't help having a pedal-powered organ also standing there. But, maybe, um... maybe. I mean, the, 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 is, there are some quite bright spotlights on it so just build some kind of foot to have it as a standing floor floor lamp or something like that <laughs> and try yeah, to sneak it into the I living room it. see what the wife says <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, i need a new reading light darling you can turn it on one yeah. lamp two lamp four lamps <laughs> but yeah that's been the uh, the highlight of the week i guess uh, getting that completed so now i can focus on the next christmas project I guess. I think um, I honestly really thought that video turned out great. The rebuild, when she rebuilt herself, that scene, I just thought you absolutely nailed it. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was great. I didn't actually think about that before well into the build. And so I made the the build sequence and then I filmed the intro, uh, which is actually one of the few intros I nailed at first try. Uh, might have something to do with me having three gin and tonics before I press record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I got the idea, I should really do that sequence from the movie where someone trashes her and then she rebuilds herself. But And then I started reading how did they pull it off in the original movie and they did actually put hydraulics in and they just pulled her to pieces and then they reversed the video. And then I thought, okay, so I just need to make the different parts fall off her. And then I can reverse the video. And um, I spent an entire day doing that. So after I completed her, I started taking things apart and then just propping them up so that they would fall off by me just blowing on them from behind the camera. <laughs> Uh, and then I realized when I had all the footage that I hadn't turned on the microphones. I didn't have any of the audio. So I had to go back into the workshop. And then, of course, just leaving the camera on, but then using the microphone and making noises so I could play <laughs> with the video in hindsight. So I was uh, also like working as a Foley artist, <laughs> which was really nice. 
And uh, I had really fun filming that sequence, just trying to mimic the entire sequence from uh, the movie. So I was really pleased with that. I was yeah, even more pleased be. with that than the, the building itself. Yeah. You should be. My uh, the favorite bit for me though was uh, seeing my sticker on your bandsaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always. <laughs> I think now that's actually the one thing that remain remains. I'm gonna put my own logo on the back of the car as a bumper sticker. Yeah, nice. and uh, of course, uh, I see you can buy online actually the license plate from the car in the movie. Uh, so I was thinking that maybe I should try and see if I can make a. Uh, like a, I don't know what it's called when you are hammering out license plate in English. The stamping technique for doing or... that. Yeah, is it is it as easy as it's calling it stamping? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Well, <laughs> that would be a fun project. But then again, since I'm keeping keeping it for later, and I'm guessing the the kids are lining up to use it next year, so I, I can add. I also want this classic Auga, the, the car horn. <laughs> so I'm get, getting one of those. And of course... Uh, Why would you get with that one? Gonna... You should go for a honka, honka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can have that as well. And that, of course, you want side mirrors. And a, a guy actually commented on the video that he would really love to see indicators on it <laughs> just because the hilarity of it when you're walking around, if you're turning right, you can just indicate... Coming right, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. So, what did you get up to at the weekend then, KJ? Or the th- last week? Uh, well, uh, not super much. The only really maker thing I did was actually fixing the lawnmower that lost a wheel uh, a couple of weeks ago. So, I replaced the entire rear axle with a threaded rod instead. So now it's fixed to 50 millimeters of cut height. <laughs> no more wandering. And... I should probably 50, be fine. 50 millimeters is probably the optimum, isn't it? Well, that <laughs> yeah, depends that's, what you uh, want. That's the perfect length. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that was somewhere in the Royal Horticultural training that I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and other than that, the only maker thing... That I have actually done is a uh, booked hotel room for Maker Central, so now it's oh yay! So, so, I, so I started <laughs> oh, the, the long and agonizing process with the the hard part, the deciding on a hotel. Now I have to find the flights as well. Brilliant. So where are you stopping? Uh, it's the Premier Inn uh, again, and I I wasn't really keen on on going there a second year, but when I looked at the prices. I couldn't really <laughs> argue against it because no. it was like half of, of the others. And I thought, okay, do I want to spend uh, like 700 quid for the Hilton or 350 for Premier Inn? Hmm. 350 well, quid? I think it was something like that. For Oh, really? We should have booked it last week when I said... Yeah, apparently. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, crap. When I looked at it, was um, the price hasn't changed when I since I looked. All right, we we we're, we're just doing one night, but it's uh, we've got a yeah. family room for ninety three quid with breakfast. Yeah, that sounds. Uh, I mean, I I've done uh, three nights, so yeah. I think I'm just gonna send you guys a cardboard cutout of myself, and then uh, <laughs> I can be with you in spirit. <laughs> Yeah, that's worked you, so far. Are you backing out as on as Havard? Yeah, well, if the if the prices keep rising like that, I mean, I can. I love you guys, but uh, I could also buy tools. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that was my my thought actually. <laughs> I, I'm thinking of the budget for for the the show, what I'm willing to pay. But if I go with the cheaper hotel, then I can uh, splash out on some tools instead, because I really want to buy a a, a Palm router. And it's really hard for me to convince myself to actually do it. But but if I now free it up, three hundred fifty quid just like that, then it's a little that's easier. A, a little easier. That's a hell of a palm router for three hundred and fifty quid. I've, yeah, I I've, think asked, I've asked Santa for one. I have. <laughs> yeah, but I think you need to pay that for the Devolt uh, battery powered uh, fancy one with all the accessories. You're easily. Hitting those yeah, prices, the, the Volts one are scary expensive. But it's also, and that's a problem at our local uh, 
hardware store, they actually have both the Makita and the DeWalt and everything. So, of course, I, I've been there mm-hmm. and uh, Copperfield on all of them, and it really stands out. So I really want it. And also after you get the adapter plates for using the Bosch batteries, it's actually a no-brainer, but ooh, it's pricey. So yeah. <laughs> it's on my list. But uh... I think I'm actually going with the corded one since... I'm pretty sure that I want to hook up a vacuum to it. So then I will be dragging along a hose and then I can just as easily just strap the power cord to the hose and then it's no problem. That yeah. makes sense. I, I was thinking about that as well, but if you if I go with the battery powered one, then I can bring my work pieces outside and I don't need to hook it up to a vacuum system. So then I I have long extension to... cords instead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that will be che- cheaper. You can you can get quite far extension cord wise for the price of that palm rider. Yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> it's hard to justify spending loads and loads of money on the top end tools when you know we're we're all just hobbyists, really, aren't we? We're not. Yeah, we're not making, making any. You don't spend money to earn money. You spend money no. to have yeah playthings. Exactly. Yep, but I'm also thinking. I agree on some tools, but when I'm getting like the full size bandsaw or if I'm getting a thicknesser, I know that I would like to buy it because I need it. And I'm going to use it, of course, not as a professional, but I'm going to use it enough yeah. that I would want the professional one. And then I I go by the you buy once, cry once uh I'm thinking if I buy a like a floor standing band, so that's the one I'm gonna stick with yeah. to the day I die. So I think that's probably that f- makes shelling out a bit easier. I think that's probably fair enough. I mean, you've you've run your smaller band, so you you know you would like a bigger one now. But I think to jump straight yeah. in and you know get that that big tool, that expensive tool, sorry, I should say, and then you know figure out it's one of those tools that you barely touch. Then you know that's, yeah. a, that's a crying shame, isn't it? Really. I think that is smart to do. If you are unsure, you start with a smaller, cheaper version. Version, like I did with the CNC. I bought a small one for nine thousand dollars, just to figure out if this is something I like, and then I can get a bigger, more expensive one. <laughs> small one for nine thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean that's the scary part. If you want a good one, that's that's the price point they start at, isn't it? More or less. Um, if you want it plug and play yeah. in like industrial size quality with good tolerances, yeah, that's the um, that's what you'll end up. With. I mean, that, that's <laughs> do you want something that to tinker with to make it work, or do you actually want something that you can use straight out of the box? And those are a couple of th- thousands, I think. Yeah, and I don't like building my own tools. I, I, I use tools to make other stuffs. And I mean, I, I wouldn't buy a full-size bandsaw as a kit either. I, I want the one that have the proper bearings and uh, the quality control from factory so that <laughs> it actually works as intended. I mean, it would it would be fun to have, I mean, building a... a a big CNC from scratch or from parts, so to say. But I mean, that would take me like three years to actually <laughs> make it go. And I wouldn't have time to do any other kind of making in that time. So, yeah. No, and the problem is, f- for me at least, that my projects tends to deviate off course from what I initially intended. So, I would probably end up with a CNC router with a laser accessory and a cup holder. (laughs) I would never be finished because I would just keep adding things that I think that would be nice. (laughs) Is there a multi-machine where you that have both a CNC router, a laser and a 3D printer nozzle so they can (laughs) add and replace and engrave all at the same time? Well, I... I think I've seen someone playing around with it because you could put a laser accessory on the router head, so to speak. And then, of course, uh, you can have, instead of the 
like the height adjustment calibration you could uh, use the same one for the laser and then of course the the patterns and so on should be the same but of course the bed is not made for the laser so and engraving would work but if you're cutting through materials you will be cutting into the bed of your uh, router and I, I actually did that on mine not with a laser but just after i got it while i was testing it i was making something and then the the router was doing its thing and then suddenly it just stopped and it just plunged down straight down it drilled through the workpiece and through the aluminum bedding and it it left a hole there um i got really good like follow up from the the company who delivered it uh they they really couldn't find out what happened uh, and we concluded that well, we'll see if it happens again and we'll follow up on it. But it was a a freak occurrence. And I'm kind of thinking that it was... I was using the battery-operated um, vacuum cleaner as dust suction. And that creates a lot of static. So there might be some static discharge that actually mm. uh, threw out some electronics mm. that it, it 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 lost count of how high it was or something like that. So that, that's the the theory so far. But the thing is that there is a lot of electronics. The motherboard is just under the uh, like the base plate on the cutting surface. I think that's a design flaw because anything that happens through that, you you might have a machine that can lobotomize itself <laughs> just keep drilling at the right place that seems kind of stupid actually yeah <laughs> and the funny thing is it's 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 heavy so it's a pain in the ass to get on the underside to grease up all the bearings and so on which you need to do uh, every now and then so as i was thinking why don't they have access panels on the side so you can just screw open to just get easy access and now I just realized that they have an upgraded version and they have that. Uh, they also have a better, like the dust shoe on the router head as well. And those were two things that I swore loudly in my workshop that <laughs> someone didn't think properly on those details. So I was kind of thinking if they are bugging my workshop for feedback. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> it. So you're going to get the newer version just to... Uh... Just so you can have those that facility. Uh, no, no, but uh, and I, and I'm not going to cut into it to to make it on my own. But I was thinking about sending them an email if that uh, like the dust shoe attachment actually fits because it's yeah. the same uh, spindle, so it it should be possible to bolt that on because that solution is not working very well as it is today. It'd be nice if they just did an upgrade kit for yours, wouldn't it? Yeah. So Glenn, what's what have, you, what, have you, what have you been up to? Well, KJ, last week... You've been spending a lot of time in the shit. Right? I have been spending a lot of time in the toilet. <laughs> you literally been waiting all night for that, haven't you? Yeah. To our listeners, you should be glad that this is an audio-only podcast because uh, me and KJ, we have been bombarded with pictures of uh, Glenn from his toilet... <laughs> The entire week <laughs> plastered all the walls <laughs> yeah <laughs> so last <laughs> you idiots uh, <laughs> last week kj you said so you're gonna have it done by tuesday next tuesday are you yeah. so i did my damnedest to get as far as i could with it <laughs> <laughs> but no it's not finished so what I did do is I built the walls, built all the framework for the walls, and I plasterboarded all the walls, and I filled all the walls, and I've done all the plumbing and the electrics. I'm waiting for the new loo and the sink to arrive for it, but we're nearly at nearly at fo- first coat of paint stage. Nice. So it's coming on nicely. Sounds like it. <laughs> How big is the space? Oh, it's tiny. It's just a it's just a, a loo in a sink, basically. It's only two meters by one meter. Hmm. Yeah. A few complications that the all the trip switches for the house are in there as well, so I've had to box those in. Hmm. But then obviously leave a access door on there, which will cover with a mirror, hopefully. 
Ah, nice. The bathroom <laughs> cabinet. It's yeah, exactly. Drugs or so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Surprise for someone snooping around and see what meds yeah, you're on. That's right. Two forty <laughs> volt meds. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's coming on nicely. But um, it has meant I've had no time for anything else, basically, other than going to work. So how is your work schedule? I mean, we just had our first proper drop of snow here. So I'm guessing you're going into a low season or do you have other work that goes around for the winter season? Oh, no. Um, so the the places I look after are big, basically. So I, I'll save jobs that can keep me going through the winter, like the hedging, and to cut in the hedges and stuff like that, I'll I'll put off until the winter. Um, I look after a lake complex as well now, so one of the jobs will be trimming down all around the lakes over the winter. Mm. So yeah, it's just the same sort of stuff, but save the the harder, hotter work that I don't get a chance to do in the summertime until the winter now. That's yeah, nice, yeah. That's smart. Yeah, but I, I I generally keep the same hours. Keep going through the same hours, you know, you know, weather permitting. It's only really snow and heavy rain that puts me off. So you don't into shoveling snow or something like that to keep you busy no. in the winter time. No, 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 no. We don't get enough snow here, KJ. Oh yeah, I, I forget that. <laughs> yeah, that that would probably keep, you know, on a typical year that would probably occupy I don't know about two hours of my time. <laughs> Not really worth it. No, no, definitely. I mean, it's it's. It's annoying, but it's also a relief because uh, two days ago that it started snowing, and I was just okay. I had a few projects, but they are now postponed to next year. So it, it freed up my <laughs> schedule just overnight, which was nice. <laughs> but you 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 have been waiting for some bad weather, haven't you, to so you can crack on with one of your projects, one of your filming projects? Yeah, uh, I have, but. Uh... It's kind of stacking up, and I'm realizing Christmas is. I don't like saying it. We are still in October, but it's it's getting too close for comfort. <laughs> Suddenly realized, um, you know, I've been busy doing the the grown up projects as I've been calling them, and um, I have to make a bench for a friend who's getting married in a couple of weeks. It's not a lot of work, but it's still an amount of work to make this bench. And what it is, is um, it's a special bench. You, you basically build the bench and then everybody signs their name on it at the wedding do. Ah, cool. And then um, it comes back here and I'll refinish it. So all that stuff's weatherproof. So that'd be a nice little project to do. But uh, I've only got two weeks to do that and finish a toilet and hopefully build an office. <laughs> and maybe get some sort of something for YouTube in that time as well. But is that bench like a British tradition or is it just something that they came up with? Something that she came up with. I've never heard of it before, to be honest with you. But then, yeah, yeah I looked into it and you can buy them. But, you know, why, why would... Benches? Yeah, I've seen them. In yeah. <laughs> 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 we have all sorts of seats here. We're not even limited just to benches. Oh. Yeah, I've actually seen this. Uh, I've seen these shorter benches that is actually made for one person. I don't... They had a separate name for one. <laughs> it's something on C... Change yeah, no, that's not there's, yeah. those, there's those stools, there's those that's exclusively nice. French ones as well, isn't it? The chaise longs, yeah, which don't make any sense at all. They just look like they've got an arm missing at one end, don't they? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, make it easier to push so, someone so some some woodworker got tired of building a sofa <laughs> on that board. Of this. It, this, this is it, <laughs> chaise long or whatever it's called, <laughs> and we'll charge you more for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so how's your video coming on kj i think it's coming on nicely um i just have to do all the uh, i mean the the i think i've got all the cuts in the right order and the right length and that sort of thing i just have to do all the polishing and uh, and uh, add music and that sort of thing so can we can we help you along and put a deadline on your release no (laughs) 
No, I mean, don't. Oh, yeah, I I just been busy editing the the podcast, so I don't. I haven't had any any computer time. The last you did make a meal so. of the editing, didn't you, last week? Yeah, I'm. I made my own bed, uh, <laughs> so I got to sleep. In it. Nobody even screwed it up for you. <laughs> no, that's mostly myself. <laughs> you should really just do some checks before you start recording and hope for the best. <laughs> I was thinking for uh, not for the next video, but uh, it's it might be a topic that we could visit uh, when we have the intern on, uh, and that is live streaming, because he has a, a really good setup, uh, yeah. which I would like to ask a bit about and get some input because, of course, I've seen it every time I log on to YouTube. You have that uh, live function, and I was thinking. Is it no effort November, I think, is the thing? And then should I just do the next Hellcorder video with no editing? Just putting the camera on, on live feed and just uh, spend three hours uh, crimping cables or something <laughs> like that. It's a very narrow niche, but uh, I mean, you might find a couple of interesting people who <laughs> actually tune in. Just make it slow <laughs> TV and it's, have the yeah. a camera on 24-7 in your workshop. <laughs> Yeah, ooh, I could sell that to the Norwegian Broadcasting Company because uh, slow TV is the rage in Norway yeah. for the last couple of years. Hurtigruten and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, and knitting by the hour and watching paint dry. I mean, they can't really <laughs> stop coming up with concepts. So, <laughs> is that really I mean, a thing? It, it's, yeah, so it, it's not far off seeing a middle-aged man sitting in his garage uh, crimping <laughs> ferules onto cables. <laughs> He did have some interesting gear, though, didn't he, Mellow Fire? He had, sorry, I keep calling him Mellow Fire because that's what he is on Instagram, Mellow Labs. Yeah. Um, but he, um, he had that camera that tracked him around. And then did you see that little device he had for taking all the nasty audio out of um, as he was recording? Yeah, I saw it. I didn't get a good picture of it, and I haven't bothered Googling it because microphone wise i'm I'm happy with my setup but that uh camera tracking thing yeah that would be nice in the workshop i mean if it could if i could put that up on the mount in the middle of the ceiling and i, I wouldn't and it would save me moving a tripod around 50 million times during a project that would be nice <laughs> got it on the top of the ceiling the glare from the top of your head would really ruin the lighting though <laughs> 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 Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Uh, yeah, but I see the the professionals. They use reflectors to get the light to where they want it to go. So, <laughs> if you have that built in, maybe that uh, I should charge extra for that. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> oh. No worries. I, I cry myself to sleep every <laughs> night anyway. So. <laughs> so, KJ, did you actually go to work today? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you, 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 you might think that I did. No, um, uh, I, but you, I was just... Uh, what's it called in English? I don't know. Uh, I visited a lot of different places uh, uh, in the city. And uh, you can't really do that by car, so I did it on foot instead. So I ended up walking like nineteen thousand steps or something like that, yeah, because it's easier. Fantastic, to yeah. So that was. I feel it in my legs now that it was a <laughs> while since I did that stunt. <laughs> Last. So, um, what were you doing visiting all the substations you've done? Uh, yeah, more or less uh, checking out substations that uh, that needs needs work, so to say, uh, to check out uh, uh, what's the configuration and and how they're going. And I also had a, a student with me who is uh, who I'm trying to teach everything I know. No, not everything I know. That <laughs> would take far too long. Uh, but. Uh, I was just about to say, what did you teach him after lunch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're really kind today, aren't you? I have, yeah. <laughs> Someone's on fire. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I was going to say, when but you said you'd done 90,000 steps. I was going to say, with those legs, did you get to the moon and back? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, Ari, the, the student said that that maybe we should put uh, those uh, rubber bands you put on horses' legs so they don't, can't move them very long, <laughs> so they stand still. Because, yeah, uh, I might be a fast walker. <laughs> And not by choice, by by design. I'm not. I'm not going to apologise to you after that short eulogy you gave me last last week. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I deserve it. <laughs> so, where did those fancy carriages come into uh, play today? Yeah, the ones I, I sh- shared on Instagram. Yeah, I, I just saw them in a in a garage uh, in the city. It was pretty close to. Uh, uh, one of the major theaters, so it might have to do something to do with that, or it's some other touristy thing. It was just great old, old timey carriages, but motorized, so you can oh, drive they? around. Th- yeah, so uh, you could uh, drive oh, cool. drive them around. Uh, I <laughs> guess there's some touristy thing. Uh, so one That's one gold and cool. one bronze. They looked really, really fun, <laughs> but I didn't have time to to steal them. So. <laughs> Uh, Stockholm looks beautiful. Yeah, it's a bit uh, dark and rainy at the moment. But we, it, it's it's really better in the summertime because we don't really get the, that much snow in the in the city either. So ah, okay. it's, it's mostly slushy and grey and miserable oh for the coming months. <laughs> oh dear. So I, I recommend anyone going come in the in the summertime or spring or early fall. Just ruin the tourist industry for the winter in Sweden now. No, there's a lot of better places to go than a city in the winter time <laughs> in in Sweden, like anywhere but a city. I know what I've been meaning to ask you two guys for a while. Sorry, I just dropped my pencil. What I've been meaning to ask you guys for a while is: Do you get the? Do you see the Northern Lights where you both are? No, for, too far south. Right. Well, we we can see them in Scotland here. Yeah. Well, we do. It's not that often uh, down here in Oslo, and also we got a lot of light spill from the uh, surrounding yeah. cities. Mm-hmm. So um, I think we had like one or two again. occasions we had it, but not frequent. Okay, there was a there was a case yeah. actually of somebody seeing them a couple of miles and got a good photo of them just a couple of miles from here. I think back um, at some point this year. Yeah, but uh, you know that was a, a, a freak. A freak instance that happened. Yeah. Definitely not a regular thing. I really want to go somewhere far north and see them properly. Uh, but then you have to actually have to do that as well. That's <laughs> that, that, rough. That's the uh, that's the problem. I ha- I have a few friends and they post uh, pictures every time they see the northern lights and it really makes me homesick because uh, when I lived back home. I used to go out, especially in the winter time, and just lay down in the snow because it's so dead quiet with all the snow in the terrain, and you just lay there and look at the northern lights. And now there is a company who actually has set up these uh, glass domes. Uh, the first time yeah. I saw saw them was in Finland, I think. But of course, they are crazy expensive, and you're not guaranteed to get uh, the northern light for that night when you have booked a room. But of course, if you could sleep in a glass dome, which is heated, and then of course, get that color play up on the sky, that would be really beautiful. Just um, put a greenhouse up. Yeah, that's uh I mean for the price of one night at one of those you could get a decent green. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but then the problem is I I'm I'm too far south. Just... But it it was really interesting me and the wife we took the the Hurtigruten which is a cruise uh, line that goes <laughs> uh, along the west coast of Norway and they actually advertise with uh that you can get to see the northern lights during the winter time because they the trip takes a couple of days so there's a quite big chance that we'll get to see it and of course there's a lot of tourists there uh, a lot of americans lots of chinese and i remember we were sitting eating dinner and 
suddenly you hear announcement over the speaker from the system that uh, all right now you can see the northern light on the right side and we almost capsized because you had 2,000 Americans and Chinese <laughs> suddenly just rushing over to one side of that cruise ship. You could feel it leaning over. It's like, and I was looking out and, oh, that's nothing. So we just went in and had the cafeteria for ourselves for a <laughs> few hours. I mean, that's you what I mean. One, one or two. Uh, sorry. That's what I mean. That you have to go really far north to see them for real, real. Not just see glimpse of yeah. glimpse of it. Okay. Do you think you'll move back north one day? Well, hopefully. Um, I have. Well, I have launched the idea for the wife that. Uh, um, well, that it uh, would be something that we could do when she gets tired of her work. Then I can change, and then. Of course, uh, Trondheim, which is the largest city, uh, not far from where I'm born, is actually a city where she thinks that she would like to live sometime. So, I mean, it, it's a long-term goal, but we, we have kids, so you'll never know. Um, it's a re- it retirement plan. Years, and then we're stuck here. Yeah. But, of course, I'm hoping, and that's uh, that's my long-term backup is uh, the one of the largest and best universities in Norway are in Trondheim. So I'm thinking if I can get one or maybe both of the kids to lean against <laughs> going back to their <laughs> roots to study there, then it's, it's easier for us to move uh, back north. Yeah, Trondheim is a really nice town. Uh, my university, my the sec- section on my university has a, a brother or sister. Uh, on, on in the Trondheim, so we have a yearly of people go there to visit and, and go to their party and get electroshocked uh, because that's that's <laughs> part of the thing. Yeah. And I think they they turn the voltage up some more for the Swedes as well. Um, but Trondheim was a really really beautiful city and was a really nice people there as well. Yeah, I, I of course it's been too close. To home for many years. I needed to move out, but now I'm starting to feel more like homesick. That it would be nice to move back there at some point. Of course, maybe not in the middle of the city, but I see. Well, I start to follow up uh, on uh, various pages online, and I see what uh, like houses and small farms go for up there versus here, and it's a bit like the Swedish maker. I mean. I could move from where we are today uh, a bit further north and we could end up with a a large estate with a decent workshop and actually be debt-free. So, um, of course, um, I would have something to do then, but, of course, if if that would be interesting for my wife, that's another question. Could that be something that you... I mean, would you be able to get a second mortgage and buy something like that now and rent it out to somebody else until you're ready and let it go up in value no it's because the the renters market for those kind of properties are not so good but of course we did think at some point that all right instead of getting a cabin we could get like an apartment in Trondheim because it's it's always going to be the biggest student city so no matter how the housing markets and so goes, you will always have students needing a place to live. Um, But then again, with the interest rates as they are going now, I don't think that's uh, an investment we're going to do. We got an old cheap house. um, We haven't put too much money into it. So we are really comfortable now, even with the interest rates going up. How the groundwork's coming on while we're on the subject of your house? Well, it's uh, it's completed uh, at the the level where, of course, in the summertime we need to put some grass seeds down and relocate some plants and so on. But uh, the ground is totally completed. All the plumbing is done. Uh, What's I the smell in the workshop? To... <laughs> I even removed the smell. Um, I didn't actually have to do any concrete work. Um, because it turns out, of course, uh, we put a new drain in 
our workshop when we did the inside pipes a few years ago. And of course now uh, when they connected new pipes from the outside and in something had happened. So the water in the water lock of that drain has actually emptied out. Ah, oh, yeah. So and I didn't think about it because that drain is underneath my center workbench. But when I did some filming and I just was moving it around and I just realized, oh, yeah, there's a drain there. And I just popped the lid and, oh, that's bone dry. So I put some water in it and then the smell went away. So that was actually that's when the wind fix. was. Yeah. yeah, very easy fix. Pleased with that. Yeah, yeah. Still need to do the concrete part, but uh, it's not as uh, urgent. You really have to remember to fill up those drains that you don't use regularly. Apparently, that's a that's a good way for uh, uh, radon gas to, from from the ground to come into the house as well from a from a dry uh, dry drain. Yeah, I, I, w- I was kind of thinking to see if you get like a, a airtight plug for that because the only time I'm going to need it is if I spill something. So then I could have like a lid. I just if I spill something, I just pull it up and let it drain out, and then I can plug it again. I don't need the water lock there. Yeah, I mean, that's it's some sort of just <laughs> just put a plunger on it. <laughs> yeah, but then again, it's it's now three years old or something, and I this is the first time I had to refill it, so I don't have heating in the workshop floor, so it it doesn't dry out that quickly. Yeah. I've heard you mention the radon gas before, KJ. What's all that about? I don't think I've come across that here. Yeah, I, th- I think it's. It might be more in our part of the world with the being on uh, on on granite ground. I think it. I mean, it's a, a radioactive gas that leaks out of the ground. Uh, and when you build a house <laughs> on the ground with some holes in it, that gas leaks in. And if you don't ventilate the house enough, it stays there. Uh, it will so, start glowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not that uh, that. Uh, Dangerous, I think, but I mean, it it adds to the risk of con- cancer. So yeah, yeah, you should really get rid of it, uh, and you you wow. get um, you get funding from the government to help you remove it. It wasn't a, as big a deal uh, in olden days when the houses were leaking, uh, yeah. leaking air all everywhere. But now that we build so tight houses, uh, it's a problem that it's. It builds. It builds up. So what's it solved with? Just just ventilation. Yeah, in some cases you you just need to to put in ventilation, and but uh, in our case we had to put in a, a radon fan. So it's more or less they uh, drilled the two big holes, or like 120, 160 millimeter holes, perhaps in the in the floor, and just put a fan to suck out the air from underneath the underneath the, the floor in the basement okay. and blow it out. That seems like so an easy fix. Yeah, the the, so from... the tough part is that they, they did it in the workshop, so I had to relocate a lot of stuff to actually make them, <laughs> make it able for them to, to build it. And in the wintertime, it, it feels rather weird to have a big ventilation hole that spews out uh, more or less warm air that's a big cloud coming out when it's <laughs> below freezing. <laughs> I think I'm going to do something be, with that. But that's interesting, having an old house from the 60s, which is uh, leaking left and right. I just have to wait a bit more, and then it's actually back in style. Um, I did. Uh, <laughs> in my previous job, I worked. Uh, we had a lot of um, uh, architects working there, and one of them said that, of course, in the late 80s and through the 90s, um, of course, you were you were getting funding uh, for putting extra insulation in, and of course, new windows. And of course, the the rage uh, in the early two thousand was you really seal up all the houses, and then you have uh, like a forced ventilation system or even a closed one that actually doesn't pull in new air from the outside. And now they started seeing that oh. They have actually a larger problem now with mold and, of course, the climate for asthmatics and so on. It's it's too clean and the 
you get more sleepy uh, because you don't get the fresh air that is changing out. So now they're actually teaching that again in architecture school to look how they built houses in the olden days with uh, you actually have like where do you place your windows to get a draft through to actually exchange the air through the entire building at a certain rate to keep actually the the climate uh, acceptable for actually living in and keeping mold down and uh, like the like the condensation build up and so on which is not a problem in my house because if there is a gust of wind outside it's uh, like living in a wind tunnel and, I leave <laughs> one door. and uh, I, I was thinking of putting dampers into the doors because if we leave if i leave my door open where i go to my workshop downstairs and someone opens a window upstairs it really slams the door yeah. because you get a draft through the entire house. Yeah, same here. So it's actually by the latest standards, this house is better than it would have been deemed uh, in the nineties, early two thousands. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's fun to see that uh, things that you have learned about houses for several hundred years, suddenly over a couple of decades were deemed uh, not good enough and then tried a lot of new solutions. And now they're like, mm, maybe the thing that they came to conclusion after a couple of hundred years of testing might have some merit to it. So it's fun <laughs> to see they go back on some of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, you always get, when you switch something out, you, you fix one problem and gain a new one instead. So then you see, if, is the new problem worse than the old problem? Should we go back? Was that better or not? Yeah. And that's the same thing. We have a couple of neighbors with like this funk uh, flat roof housing. And I mean, you're living in Norway. Uh, you can put whatever you want on a flat roof house, but water will always find a way. And even the Vikings knew that you need a, a tilted roof. I mean, if you look to Norway's history, it's a bit uncertain if they figured out the way to do their roofs by turning a boat upside down or if they actually invented the viking ship by turning a roof upside down so uh, <laughs> but yeah i mean both of them are brilliant at keeping water outside and they both have a an angle yeah so there, there might be some merit to that that would be a really nice shed just to have a a, a dragon boat upside down with some walls around it yeah you have uh you have a few buildings like that, uh, the longhouses. It's basically a ship that's turned upside down. Yeah. In in Norway, but, not in Sweden, or both. Yeah, we have some. Uh, I'm not some sure more... in Sweden, but yeah, we, we had Vikings here as well. We just yeah. didn't go and um, plunder England. We went east instead. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Moscow, Constantinople. You raped yourself through hell. Yeah, well, that's true. But uh, but those aren't be... as uh, as commonly known in Western culture. So yeah. The, the North and the Danes are most more commonly known in the British Isles as well. This. Yeah, the, the, the Swedes has always been hiding in the inner parts of uh, the ocean there. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, just... the Atlantic is too big for us. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sneaking up the rivers into the eastern countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like we're getting about ready for a wrap-up, guys. <laughs> yeah. I was looking at the time. I don't actually have a timer here. So, but I did look at the clock and all right, it's time for Glenn to do his thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? I just realized you are, I don't think, at least I haven't said it's time to wrap it up. So I, I think you is actually the one who's done that on all the episode. KJ did it once. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I think I've done it once, but you've done it most times, yeah. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Which is strange for me. I'm usually the timekeeper in a lot of settings, <laughs> but here, it's good to have someone else do it. There you go. You can have every Tuesday night off if you like. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say, then I'm off. <laughs> Actually, we, we did talk about that, if we should have the the one actually doing the recording to also do the intros and then we could just pile on the timekeeping as well so that the host actually is doing all the hosting roles and editing roles. Yeah. 
Are you saying you should be the host every week of art? <laughs> no. <laughs> thank, thank God, no. <laughs> then we go to having what, uh, an episode every third week instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To all our trusty listeners, we would like to thank you for joining us for one more week. And uh, if you can't wait for another week, there might be a half pint just in the middle of the week. We don't know. We'll see. Enjoy. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah.